All right, guys. This is DJ Wolf Live uh, Friday Wow Part Two. Let me go ahead and uh, try to get in the vernacular of the situation here. Now, in the last couple of weeks, we lost three most noted, well-known rappers. Uh, I forgot what the one guy name was. He was popular down in the South, along with Rich Homie Quan, and uh, who, who passed away. Uh, I heard passed away yesterday, matter of fact. And uh, last Friday, a week ago, last Friday, matter of fact, my man Fat Man Scoop passed away. I, I, and the crazy part about it, I just was listening to some of his music days before his passing. Sure did. Then I saw a video uh, just a couple of days ago about him being in the hospital. Do you know he was concerned more about his career? And this was, he was in the hospital about a, year, about a little over a year ago, I think. And he was discussing his career. He wasn't discussing about his health at all, really, for the most part. He was little. He had more concern about his career than his entire health. No joke. I thought that was strange. Um, he mentioned about it briefly, but he kept talking about his career and what he had to go do, and you know, blah blah blah. And I, I, I'm like, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you have to take your health into accountability at all times. Your health worth is worth more as weight and gold than wealth. And I think on some respects, I, I can't say whether he did or not because I didn't know him personally. But you do have to take your health and accountability over wealth any day of the week. You have to. And you should. But a lot of people don't do that. A lot of folks do not do that. They put their wealth into accountability, accountability before their health. And that's even people who don't have a lot of money. I know people like that. You know? They're like, well, oh, cost too much to go to a doctor. Well, I don't want no doctor touching me and all that stuff. You know, there's a reason why you have doctors. Okay? There's a reason why there's something out here in the books called health care. There's a reason for that. There's a reason for, for why you go. You know, one of the reasons why I had my colonoscopy two weeks ago because I want to have my health check in order. You know? I want to be accountable for taking for using preventative health. That's one of them. You know? Uh matter of fact. As a matter of fact, folks, do you know col uh colon cancer is like one of the top leading, top three if not top two, leading causes of death for both men and women. That's documented, folks. It's not me saying hyperbole. This is real talk. You know. And I took mine seriously uh, about a year or so before uh, uh, my man Chadwick Bo Bozeman lost his life to colon cancer. Matter of fact, that's right around the time when I heard about him, about him having it. That's when I went and got mine done. That and the fact that you know, my father passed away from cancer, even though it wasn't colon cancer, was it was uh, it was from uh, the effects from prostate cancer, which I need to get checked. I'm, I'm actually going to get checked uh, next month anyway, by another month or so. You know, my, I'm scheduled. I'm scheduled for it soon. I just passed my doctor's office on the way back. Matter of fact, um, and. The, the key is, you got to find you a good doctor. I had a doctor prior to my doctor, and I had him through Kaiser. And ironically, he he actually used to work, the doctor I had before, the doctor I got now, worked at Cleveland Clinic. <clears throat> and he kept telling me he, he did not want to check, he didn't want to check my prostate. He didn't, he didn't even want to get me tested for prostate. I'm going to check it. Yeah, what's weird? I was like, why would you not do that? You're a male doctor. And I understand he probably felt uncomfortable doing that. So I actually ended up getting another doctor. This time it was a black doctor doctor checked me. And the black doctor told me the guy was wrong. The guy tried to say, oh, you have to be 50 to get checked out. The guy was, the doctor was lying. 
The doctor actually lied. That's the first time I ever had a doctor lie on me. Literally. He lied. Of course, you know, um, he was a black doctor, either by the way. But I had a doctor actually lie on me. He told me, oh, you had to wait to a certain age. And even my mother called, called bullshit on the guy. My, my own mother called BS on this fool. Because he was clearly wrong. He was clearly wrong. He was wrong all day. He tried to tell to, you know, he tried to tell you, oh yeah. Uh no. He you know, he tried to say he wasn't wrong. He was wrong. You don't do that. You know, if you have a patient say I need to get checked, and you're not doing anything about it, and you're gonna lie, so oh, you know you got you get checked at 50. I wasn't even 50 yet. Now, I'm gonna tell you a true story. In a quarter mile, I had a, my a relative of mine, in law mine, who had found out that they had prostate cancer in their late 40s. Their late 40s, y'all. Yeah. Now, I wasn't, and at the time, when I, I, I asked him about guy checked, I was like, I may have been 45. Something like that. Yeah, I was a little. I, I knew I was in my. I was in my mid forties, and he would not check me. He kept telling me that. So I um eventually switched doctors because I was like, no, I can't deal with this guy no more, man. You know, and I had him for about a couple of years. He sucked. I personally didn't like him. He had a horrible bedside manner as a doctor, anyway. Now let me get to the bedside manner. Uh, when we saw bedside manner as a doctor, as a doctor that don't just take you as a patient. Because uh, they have to work on you. There are people who really generally care about their patients. This doctor I had out there was not one of them. So years later, I found a doctor out this way uh, um, in this area out here, in this part of Prince George County, Maryland. An exceptionally well-mannered, well-respected doctor. And not only that, he respected you as a person and he really genuinely cared about you. I've had this doctor for eight years now. Eight years. Really, really, I think about, maybe about close to, yeah, about eight, almost nine years. And I, and, and every time I change health care plans from a different health care uh, 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 provider, I went, I went right back to him. I say, I go back to the doctor. I say, you are my doctor. You are my doctor for life. You know, that's my doctor, man. I mean, you know, great bedside manner. Somebody who really generally cares about your health, man. And he ain't on that BS. I mean, you know, you have doctors out here that ain't about that mess, and you got some that are. You know, he's straight up with you. This doctor was the one that led me to lose the 60 pounds. This doctor was the one that led me to, to, to get me serious about my health and be very health conscious about myself. No other doctor did that. I mean, he was, and this guy has been consistent. That's what I mean by best side man. A doctor who really is fighting for you. Not fighting for you, but give it to you straight. You know, it's up to you. And like he told me, it's up to you to do the work. Very, very words. It's up to you as a patient to do work. I can advise you, give you advice on this and check your health and make sure that we, you know you, you progress in what you need to do. But it's up to you to do the work. And he's right. And I stayed with the doctor for eight years, man. I've never had, I mean, I never had a doctor who was who patient and caring about his patients and he wants you to succeed. Because if you succeed, he succeeds as a doctor. He's doing his job. And he is doing his job. You know? And I can say, you know, a lot of people don't have doctors like that. You know? And if you don't, you need to get one like that. Real talk. I highly recommend that. You know? You need doctors in your corner. You need you need, you need a doctor who's about the business of caring about his patients. A lot, like I said, again, a lot of doctors are not like that. You know? They're not. It's really sad. It's ridiculous we don't have more doctors like that. 
you know, and we don't, you know, you got people out here that just have no, you know, no concern about the patients. Like I said, I had one like that. You know? And, uh, I wish I had got him years earlier, but I didn't know anything about him because I was with, I was with a, 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 a major healthcare plan. That major uh, hospital for something. I mean, a doctor, I mean, a, a, a patient, outpatient for something. Versus this family doctor, and, and, and I found out over the years because my folks, my parents had family doctors for years and years and years, and they stayed with them for decades. Uh, my mother's eighty, and she, you know, God, God bless her, she's still doing the thing. You know, she's still out and about. She got a few ailments here and there, but she's still, she's still, she's still keeping strong. You know, that's what it's about, folks. And she had her doctor. I think her doctor might have retired, but they referred her to a doctor that was similar who he recommended. And she's still doing the thing. And that's what you need. You need doctors that's going to keep it real with you. And you need that. But our culture is like, well, we don't trust doctors. Well, why the hell you go to them? Why you waste your time and money going to a doctor you don't trust? Please do tell. You know, I understand. You know, but you got doctors out here that generally care, and you know, and I took the liberty of of, of uh, going through something called persona doctors years ago, and with that, and when my doctor told me I needed to get serious about losing my weight, hey, I did it, and. I've actually maintained a level of keeping a certain amount of weight off me. When I met my doctor, I was around almost 290 pounds or close to it. About 200, I think 288 to be exact. And he just gave it to me straight. And after he did, I started doing uh, different diet plans. I, I went through, uh, uh, I started back going to the gym. Well, now first I went, first I, uh, I started uh, walking around the block. Or my neighborhood stuff started doing different things. Then I went to uh, 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 I went through neutral systems. I thought about getting the plan back, but I'm gonna try to pay a few bills off, and then eventually I'll go back to neutral systems. Neutral systems really does work, but you cannot cheat that plan. If and I can promise you, if you stick to the plan with neutral systems, I can almost guarantee you, you will lose that weight. You will lose that weight. That's on everything. I'm a living proof of it. I lost 20 pounds of neutral system in a matter of about maybe two months or something, which is not bad. You know, that's 10 pounds a month. You know, that makes all the difference. You know, when I went on another plan, I lost 60 pounds in eight months. And the weight was dropping. I mean, it was dropping. I was like, man. I lost, the, I lost almost double what I did with neutral systems on Persona. And you know what I did? I had I took a couple of supplements with Persona and they changed my eating habits. You know, I was eating more. Uh, it was kind of like a semi-keto diet, but they changed up <laughs> the type of foods I ate. And you weighed your food in. You know, you had you could only you couldn't go over a certain amount. And, 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 and uh, neutral systems was the same thing. You couldn't go over a certain amount of, 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 of uh, uh, calories or weight of the food. You had to measure it off. It made all the difference in the world. I'm kind of doing it on my own now. Really. You know, I eat yogurt maybe a couple of days. One day I might eat oatmeal. Then I may eat a breakfast bar, you know. Or I might have a soup for lunch. That's what, I guess I had oatmeal for breakfast. I had soup for lunch. I had a little bit of Chipotle. I had half a Chipotle yesterday. That's it. Good. <laughs> it was mostly grains. You know? And I never felt better. Now, today, I'm going to have my slight spurge, splurge, which is going to be my tuna sandwich for lunch. That guy from Panera. Panera. I'm telling you right now, if you want to go to a place where you have alternative uh, food uh, 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 food suggestions, 
and good food. I mean, really good food for the price that ain't too high. I highly recommend Panera Bread. Now, Panera Bread for a long time, I wouldn't even go there. I do now. Oh, here comes these fools. Panera Bread. You know, the food's not bad. Actually, they've gotten better. I went for a long time. I, didn't, I, I mean, I really didn't eat Panera Bread too much. But over the years, they have gotten really better with their food. They really have. They've gotten better and better and better. I'm gonna do the same thing. Damn. Yep. Probably the best, uh, the most better they've ever gotten with their food, to be honest, folks. Yeah, and um, I'm not waiting for them. 305. Gas over here, 305. If I, know that, I would have got gas over here yesterday. <laughs> nope. I went out there. I got gas over in VA for 315 or something. Like that. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I, uh, I think right now, to be honest, we have to take our health inventory into accountability. We have to be accountable for our health. We have each and every person has to have accountability for their health. Man, you hit it right in the... Well, Jesus, man, give me a chance to get the fuck over. Man. He flying doing it the same time. Why you just block me off in the first damn place here? He in the middle of the road doing that. But anyway, um, we're gonna have somebody tell you when to move. But we gotta stop making excuses about, oh, I can't go to the doctor. That's the same thing with people with the education. Why do they need to take to both sides of the day or road? Anyway, that's like people with the education. Like, oh, uh, uh, school hard. Blah, blah, blah. School is hard. Okay, must they be. Uh, oh, them coming from the old courthouse. Oh, they got a got car. I'm going to take a pause for a second. Wow. Sorry to that, man. Huh. Let's talk about that time. All right, the as the cars go by, <coughs> um, there was field procession and the police on it. Somebody must have, I, I mean, I know it wasn't for the, might have been for the DC cop that got shot last, last week, I don't remember, but I didn't hear anything about it, but for somebody's uh, passing. Wow. But anyway, um, I, uh, do these people don't want to stop? Oh my God. We're stopping for a reason, ma'am, sir. Goof ass. No, 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 you don't get that. You don't get that. Man, people have no respect around here. Until you pull over, pull over. I mean, it's such a big ass hurry up there. No, 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 no. Uh uh. No. Y'all see me right here. I will block this whole street up. Hey, people are rude. There's cars coming by, you stop. This way you stop, idiots. Man. In such a big ass hurry. Okay. And y'all be one what cut people off. Dumbasses. Well, I swear. Anyway, um, but yeah, we gotta stop making excuses about this. Same no people educate. I remember I was telling my in my in-laws years ago when I went back to school in the late 90s. And I was telling them, I said, I got tired of being broke. I got tired of having to work two jobs. That's what led me to going back to school. It was killing me. I was working seven days. I was working seven days a week for two, three weeks. It was burning me out. You know, it was. I couldn't even go to church. I said, it was burning me out. You know? 
And what? And I think weekends I was doing double. I pulled them doubles. <laughs> so I was like, mm -mm, that's it. I, that was about almost thirty years ago. I said I'd never do that again. Cause I was missing quality time with my son on top of that. And he was still he was still a kid. He was still a young kid. So I had to uh, put my priorities in order. And you had to put your accountability for your health in order. The same way. And accountability for, you know, getting a good education also applies to that, folks. We gotta stop making the excuse about oh I can't do uh, school's hard. School is hard. But it depends on what you want to do The school. There's so many different resources for so many different things, for so many different uh, things you can, you can do to get the education for what you can do. You know? Nothing is successful if you don't work to make it. If you don't work to attain success, you'll never reach it. Seriously, you will never reach it because you quit. You gave up. We can't be giving up no more, folks. It's time to stop making excuses about everything. We got folks in our society that do that because you come from a long line of folks who were shut out of things and told what they couldn't do. Was told, you can't do this, you can't do that. You know. It's time for us to change our way of thinking, folks. That's why you got kids out here just like, you know, I ain't doing nothing. I ain't this. I ain't that. You know, my mama said I ain't that. My daddy said I'd never be nothing. My daddy wasn't there. We got to change that mindset, folks, or we're doomed. Now, I'm, I'm serious about that. You know? We got to. Take inventory of your health. Let's start with the bullshit excuses. You know? I mean, and even me. There, I've had like one or two cheat days, uh, maybe uh, uh, every th every three and a half, four weeks. I ain't front, but it ain't every day, you know. Because even I be, be be working on my job, man. I was like, man, I don't even feel like eating. There's days where I just don't even feel like eating. That's one, you know, get my grind in, do the work, and go home, you know. And sometimes I don't even have time to eat. A quick bowl of oatmeal or something and keep it moving. You know, I gotta take some cookies right now, matter of fact. I'm not going in because I'm trying. I got fruit cups and stuff like that. I got fruit at the house. And I was like, no. Oh. And, and that was like yesterday, but you know, once in a while it's okay, but I don't, I try to lay off of it as much as possible, folks. You know. Try to lay off as much sugar as much as possible, to, to be honest. I really do. Because all that sugar ain't good for you. It's not. Yeah. I think sugar is one of the reasons I actually, at, at one point, kept weight on me because I, because I, you know, but I don't, I don't eat a lot of junk anyway. I, I mean, I know one time we, I had a friend of mine, she came into the house, you know, with a granddaughter, you know, my wife and I both know her. And she was like, you ain't got no crackers, no cookies, no pie, nothing. No cupcake, nothing. Dang. <laughs> I said, no, we don't. I don't eat all that stuff, man. I can't. You know? You have to take in inventory of health. Half the stuff that, that, that that's out there now, especially the processed stuff, got all that refined sugar and stuff and all that extra stuff that they put in your food that you ain't got no business having in your food. No way. Or you ain't got no business eating at all. And guess what it do? It make you sick. In some cases, it, it depends on the certain foods. It causes it causes you to get certain cancers. You know, there are certain meats that cause you to get that too. You know, that's why I don't eat a whole lot of um. I don't eat a whole lot. I mean, I try to lay off of meats as much as well. It's kind of hard in a way, but I, I'm not an, an extreme meat person per se anymore. You know. And even for breakfast, I don't eat, I don't eat much meat anymore. I cut, I cut a lot of that out. You know. And I don't definitely don't do it on the regular anymore. I don't. Not even on the weekdays. I stopped that. <laughs> yep. One of the things I will recommend that's good for you, especially if you want to keep your uh, colon clean, or at least help it keep clean, 
as yogurt. Yogurt, a little bit of fruit, and some granola. Trust me, it works wonders. I ain't lying. I'm testifying. <laughs> I'm being serious, though. It does work wonders. It keeps you active. It keeps you healthy. You know, one thing that I have a habit of not doing as much as working out. That's something I need to really do, start doing myself. You know, but you, you working out, you can work all you want, but you still got to eat right. You know, because it's a combination of both diet and exercise. And I am losing some weight on the uh, diet part, but you got to do some exercise too. You know, and that's something I have been doing. Even my wife's like, you need to get on treatment, which I do. You know, I think what got me a little bit on the, uh, on the lazy side is the fact that over the stream of TV services and stuff. So what I try to do in the morning, at least on the weekends, I try to, or at night, I try to watch a book of time to watch all the shows I got to watch. And then when ain't nothing to watch, I get out there and do my thing. And that's what I do. That's why I end up doing it anyway. That way I just pick the time getting the things I need to get done out of the way. Oh, that's good. I didn't have to stop. I could have should have stopped at the market. I should have got some. I should have got some. I said, you know, stay my going to market. <laughs> First thing I got at the gate. We want to go to market. I can't do that, folks. I just, it's just something that now, after being under the knife two weeks ago, and going through that trouble of drinking and stuff. But, oh, the good thing is, once I got checked out, the first time they did find polyps, the polyps were benign, which basically means that they weren't cancerous. And that's one he said he found, he thought might have been cancerous, but he said likely it's not, but he removed it. He said, see you in 10 years. I was so happy. I really was. I was elated because it shows that I'm actually healthier than I've been before. And I'm learning not to eat all that mess. Because I do know before I got that, uh, before I had, uh, I got checked out five uh, years ago, I was eating a lot of meats. I was. I was eating a lot of meats, but I was still working out. Oh, it's my dude, man. Yeah. It's my dude. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah. But anyway, uh, Ah, oh, I ain't doing this. I didn't, I didn't chop it up with him. Yeah. No, he couldn't stop it yet. I bet he didn't stop it. But anyway, uh, but that's how it be sometimes, folks. You know? Sometimes you have to do the right thing. Sometimes you have to really take accountability of your health, be right. Treat people right. And I'm going to say it. Specifically for black folks. You know. But I'm not really speaking for most white folks anyway. I'm speaking for my folks. You know. And my folks need to hear it. Get right with God. If you don't do nothing else this year with all this mess going on. Political mess is happening. Get right with God. And I'm going to say. Quick fast in a hurry yes I said it I mean it I better get right because right now with this election with the way Kamala and Trump is vibing on certain issues although I will admit that I think Trump's uh, policies or well, he has policies that actually stand up better to me in my eyes then whatever policies of Kamala Harris is not bringing. And she's not. You know, she's talking about abortion rights and reproductive rights and all that stuff. Honestly, that's not our problem. And, well, it, it's somewhat of a problem based on what she's talking about. But to me, we got bigger issues to fry. Okay, that's important to people. I understand. But we got a lot of bigger things that need to be taken care of and need to be addressed in the forefront that she's not doing. Real talk. I'm going to talk more about that in another podcast. I'm out.